Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today is Trash Day. And since it's Trash Day, that means it's another excellent opportunity for a dumpster dive. So I took a drive this morning, early in the morning, around the neighborhood. Many interesting prospects, but I don't want to contaminate my garage too much. So I picked one lucky suspect and I have him right here. That's right, guys. It's an ultralight vacuum. This particular one is a Power Force Compact Turbo by Bissell. Nice. Um, I have no idea why it was sitting next to the road. So let's go ahead and uh, take it inside. Let's do anatomy of a failure, if there is one. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. All right, everyone, here we go. This is my dumpster dive found this morning while I was driving around the Bissell Power Force Compact Turbo. Looks like it's in a beautiful condition, really, other than the fact that it's dirty because it was sitting outside. I have no idea how long it's sitting out there, but first impressions, the cord looks fine. I mean, here, let's, let's check it just to be sure. You know, you never know. Okay, looks like they've been winding this really tight. That might've put some strain right here. That's an easy fix if it was a problem. Of course, I'm going to check the cords for any mars or cuts because that is something that could really happen. Dogs chewing on the cord, etc. Overall, it looks like it's in beautiful condition. Uh, it did have a couple of accessories with it that boogered off when I put it down in my office here. My office. Um, but that's okay. You know, uh, I'll find them later. We got a hose. The hose looks like it's intact. There's no holes in it. That would be one of the first things I'd suspect. The reservoir is on there. There's no bags. It's a bagless system. Kind of cool. Detaches. Um, looks like we have pretty good seal on this guy. I'll probably have to clean it up just to be sure. Uh, and looks like the handle seal is good. Huh. Okay. Latches are functioning. And let's see. There is another filter up and under here. Yeah. So we got a pre-filter and a secondary filter. These ones here, you can tell um, somebody hasn't really been taken care of. And oh, wow, it's barely used, guys, barely used. That is a win. The, however, this filter was put in wrong. They had it, they had it offset the wrong way. Uh, it should sit like this, and it should be pinched on this seal right here. Uh, let's see. How much this stuff is wrong? Let's see, this guy here should just like rotate and lift out. I don't really want to do it though. There we go. Latches on there. Handles a little shaky shaky, um, but that's okay. That's just intrinsic to the design. It's designed to be a lightweight vacuum, okay? So um, despite the obvious things, let's take a look at the brush head. The brush head's one of those areas where it's going to fail. Often this little tube down here will crack it or it'll get plugged up. If it gets plugged up, they think, oh, it's, it's no longer good. And I've got this doohickey down here, which is interesting, maybe annoying. I don't know. What the hell is that for? Oh, is that the latch? All right, hold on. Let's, let's try it. So it lifts the brush head off. That's interesting. Okay. I might just take that off. So this lifts the brush head off the ground and prevents a total suction on the ground, which obviously would blow up the motor. And that's all that little guy does. It just lifts up whenever it's in the upright locked position. See, as soon as I lower it down, this little cam right here allows it to come out of its position and drop the head all the way down. That's interesting. Okay, well, it is what it is. Here's your on off switch. Seems to be functioning just fine. Uh, let's check the roller head. Yeah, all right, so the roller head appears to be a little bound up. Maybe a little bound up. But anyway, these are designed to be maintenance by Joe Schmo, you and me, everybody in between. There's a number two Phillips. And let's, it appears I have five screws. So let's go ahead and take these guys out. Here. I'm just going to use this guy. 
It appeared to be tough to rotate. Now, one of the number one problems with vacuum cleaners, now guys, I see vacuum cleaners every single week thrown out on the side of the road. It's one of the number one items that the household throws out for little to no reason. It's because people do not do their own self-maintenance. Now there is on even the best ones, there's a drive belt. And if that drive belt blows up, or if it gets a lot of wear and tear, you just buy another drive belt. In fact, this being a Bissell specifically means that I can almost definitely get a replacement drive belt. Almost guaranteed. Or you can find them on Amazon, you can find them on eBay, all sorts of places. Okay, so this guy comes off. Yep, two little plastic clips in the front. And look what we have there. Ha! Ah, I didn't even have to do anything else. And you know what the crazy thing is? Bissell style part num number. It's all written on the belt. This is part number 1604895. Let's go ahead and see how much is that part. I'm going to do this live on the air because this is how ridiculous people are. They threw out this vacuum cleaner. How much is this vacuum cleaner first off? I'm going to use Google Lens. Let's use the camera. And, huh. P-I-S-S-E-L-L, -L, and this is a model 2690. And it looks like this particular one could be bought right now for $54. And that's probably what they did. And, and that's on a discount site. So I always go to the cheapest place I can find them. Um, it's about $60 on eBay. Oh, look at this. Amazon replacement vacuum belts. These exact ones. $6.99 for this exact belt. And two of them, in fact. So what happens, you can see right here, this guy is not rotating as smoothly as it should. So... Guys, I, I say all the time that there's a failure is a symptom. And you can see right here that it just sat there right here on the motor and it just burned the belt. Just burned and burned and burned. It's just a symptom of a failure. The true failure, you can see right here, the bearings are a little gooed up. Definitely a little gooed up. So this one and this one right here. And you can see this other garbage that's sitting on there. And they're, they're not expensive bearings at all. You know, definitely probably on the cheaper side. But that means maybe just a couple drops of oil here and here. You got to pry that up just to get in there. Or maybe I'll drill a tiny little hole here in the end caps and, and stick a lubricator in there. But that's what it is, is. This guy right here gets caught and it burns up the belt. Wow. That was a little bit faster than I was expecting. Um, let's go ahead and check the motor. Okay. I'm rotating the shaft on the motor. You can see it right here. So that is the drive motor, which on this unit might actually be both functions. So the drive motor might actually also be the motor head for the vacuum. We're going to find that out right now. Let's go ahead and plug it in. So it should be safe because the, the roller head just isn't going to work. And let's see. All right, let's plug it in up here by the computer. And it sounds really good too. Listen. That motor works beautifully. So for a $6 and whatever part, Actually, let's say $3 part because $6 is for two of them. So for a $6 part, they threw out this perfectly good vacuum, and it only takes five screws to take it off, change out the belt, and you're good. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy, guys. So, guys, there you have it. It's, it's a wild world out there, and we are a consumer-type economy where we just throw stuff out. It's sad. It really is. $6 part, and they could have had it up and running. They just don't want to put forth the effort or even take it to somebody that could fix it for them. It's sad, really. 
Um, that's why I'm going to do projects like this to show you guys. It's really the little things that um, you can do to keep things up and going. And furthermore, more importantly, failures are only a symptom. There's always a larger problem that's creating the failure. In this case here, the bearings, they need a little bit of lubrication and they're a little stiff. And what it's causing is that belt to not spin so easily. And because of that, the tension is burning through on the pinion of the motor or on the rotor of the motor. And it just is what it is, man. So guys, this vacuum cleaner here, I'm going to get it fixed. It's going to be saved. I'm sure the family's going to be happy that I have a more lightweight vacuum than my Milwaukee battery cordless one. Although I love the cordless vacuums. Yeah, some people like plugging stuff in. It is what it is. Anyway, guys, that is my dumpster dive number two. Just to show you guys, there's stuff that you can do to have an effect on your community. Remove trash from the trash. Let's fix it. Improve your skill set. Make a difference. Thanks for watching, guys.